Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here. How's everybody getting along? Well, we got this lack of snow. Many areas are seeing the least snow they've seen in many years. Let's take a look. We're going to see a cold snap, cold wave, but that does not always mean snow. As we've seen many times this winter, let's take a look here. Yeah, we're going to see some cold air intrusions as we head through Friday into Saturday across the northern plains and New England and parts of the northeast here. But look how quickly that moves out for next week here. We're going to see a big warming trend here as winter goes on hiatus once again. That seems to be the story. But let's zoom in here to parts of the upper Midwest and to the northeast here. You can see as we go throughout the week, here's Friday and there it is Saturday. These darker purples and this whitish, greenish color, this is where you're going to see some below zero temperatures Saturday morning. Let's get into it. All right, so let's take a look at the HRRR model here. It's going to take a good look at a winter storm, a southern winter storm here. This is pretty interesting. We get these every once in a while. And you can see here, well, let's put this into motion because this is going from Tuesday. Let's get into overnight Tuesday, 11 p.m. Yeah, you're going to see most of this move out. This is going to be the first wave of low pressure moving up through parts of Arkansas. So you're going to continue with sleet and freezing rain for the most part. You know, those winter weather advisories, ice storm warnings, winter storm warnings are in effect. Look at this. Even getting into the Nashville area, we're looking at some sleet and freezing rain problems. Probably a tenth to a quarter inch of ice locally higher. So please heed those warnings and advisories that are in effect now you see 2 a.m 3 a.m 5 a.m watch what we see across southern texas here we're going to start to see another big surge of moisture here from the south now take a look at this this is going to be some gulf moisture it's going to be tapping into it and we're going to have a shallow layer of cold air here onto the northern side of the system so watch as we go out here in time it's going to give us a good idea of which areas stand to see the best chance of this heavy icing event and it's going to be the dallas area up to austin you can see h triple r is a little bit colder here than the nam three kilometer you can see up to dallas fort worth definitely getting some heavy ice by 1 p.m wednesday definitely heat all those ice storm warnings winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories now it is getting some uh heavy rain here on the eastern side uh so we'll definitely watch this but as you get some of this heavier precipitation the model doesn't quite pick up on this you get some of that adiabatic cooling and you could get some cooling at the surface now look at this 10 p.m wednesday little rock you're getting into some heavy icing up here to jonesboro as well and you get into western part of tennessee would not be surprised if this ice line is a bit further south especially initially so you'll get some ice down here across parts of northern louisiana into parts of southern arkansas as well that will change over to rain as we head into thursday but watch this we can't go too much further here. It'll get us into, there we go, one more frame. You can see here across western Tennessee, this is 1 a.m. Thursday. You do start to get into some icing here. So definitely heat all those ice storm warnings, winter storm warning. It's going to be really close here if you're in Austin or Dallas because this is going to make or break you uh, depending on especially just west of you. This is where we're going to see probably the heaviest icing occur. And then here into northern Arkansas, Little Rock on northeastward to Jonesboro, and here we go, just north of Jackson. That's probably where you're going to see the heaviest icing occur. All right, so let's pick up with our run here with the NAM 3 kilometer 1 a.m. on Thursday. So here it is. NAM is kind of drying things out a little bit quicker here across western Texas. But, you know, the little subtle differences in the models here. As I said before, I think this icing line will be a bit further south here. Memphis, Little Rock, you're going to be right on the edge here. It's going to be rather interesting here. Tennessee... Let's take a look for you as we continue in time here. This model's showing, you know, the warm air kind of winning out here. I would not be surprised, though, if we do get some periods of sleet and freezing rain. There are winter weather advisories and a few ice storm warnings covering this. So if you're in Nashville over to Jackson, definitely keep an eye on it. You could get some, you know, up to a tenth, maybe isolated areas up to a quarter inch of ice. So please heed those winter storm warnings you see in dallas by this time 10 a.m thursday it is kind of shutting off you're going to be left with some freezing drizzle though so keep an eye on this freezing drizzle is a silent killer you know especially the bridges and overpasses now what i want to show you here is to the north this is the start of our big massive frontal boundary here to the north this arctic blast you can see it here across much of the uh, northern great lakes into southeastern canada you see thursday 6 p.m now this model kind of changes everything over to rain 
a little puzzled by this. I think we'll still be seeing some periods of sleet and freezing rain on the northern side, and that's going to continue here over into parts of Arkansas as well. So, yeah, there'll be some wet snowflakes here into parts of the southern Appalachians as well. But look at this. The cold air doesn't really line up with this system. As I said before, it's always too little, too late. But look at this. This is Friday at 1 a.m. You can bet that this squall along this Arctic front blast is going to contain probably some thunder snow along it. So please stay tuned. All right, so let's take a look at the HRRR model here. Gives us a good idea along with the European model. Here it is. So, heaviest ice. Yeah, it looks like it's going to fall right in this area right here. This is where you see could see most areas a tenth to a quarter inch, but some areas could be pushing that envelope up towards a half an inch, likely. All right, so I wanted to show you this feature for Thursday evening into Thursday night across the northeast. This snow here, you can see, will be falling with this Arctic front. We could see a quick inch or two, which could make conditions very hazardous, and I expect thunder snow as this heavy squall of snow moves across the area Thursday night into early Friday morning, especially across upstate New York into northern Pennsylvania. All right, so continuing with our coverage here, let's take a look. I'm going to show you here on the temperature meter here. Take a look at the center of your screen. There it is, Dallas at 30 degrees, uh, 7 a.m. Saturday. That puts things in perspective there along the Gulf Coast. You're getting into the 40s, but look it up here into the northeast. There it is again. You know, 7 a.m., we are going to be in the thick of it here. Boston, negative 13. Concord, negative 19. Binghamton right over here, right around negative 8. Scranton, negative 4. New York City right around 0. Pittsburgh sitting around 6, 8 degrees. Harrisburg, 9 degrees. Yeah, so you get the idea here. Look at really up here into the Adirondacks. That's where we get into the negative 20s. It just gets downright miserable up here, but... If you just wait a few days here, this is the problem with this winter or the not so big problem if you're not into snow. Take a look at this. This warming trend is going to blast towards the east Monday the 6th. Look at this. We just push all of this extreme warmth up here into parts of the east and we have just erode this wintertime cold polar air mass up here into northern North America. You see, we start to get kind of like a pattern even out west where it's just well above average. We're just not seeing it. And you know what? If you go over here, this is what I really like to take a look at over here in Japan. They've been seeing a lot of snow and cold. And when Japan sees a lot of snow and cold, and Europe sees a lot of snow and cold, you tend to get these patterns here in North America that are not very conducive or winter time. And let me show you what I mean here. Here is Japan, the island of Japan. Take a look at this. So as we go throughout the week, you can essentially see here uh, what we got going on here. Inland, it is cold. And Tokyo, look at this. This is sitting like 10 a.m. Saturday, 30, 20s. So it hit in the upper 20s, lower 30s here. So yeah, with Japan being this cold, and look at that, Eastern Asia as well. It's just bone chill and cold here you're not going to get these kind of cold blasting air masses. You take a look. Let me show you the pattern here across. I mean, this really sh puts things in perspective here. You got this massive cold and then another massively cold here. And look at over here into North America. Yes, you got initially this massive cold here into eastern North America, but it just doesn't last. We'll look at it as we go in time here into next week. You can see what the pattern's doing. All the cold air is bottled up here into Eastern Asia, Japan. Look at Alaska. There's the big old ridge. There's a little bit of trophy dust. And there's a massive ridge there across Western Europe. And then Eastern Europe, there's a big old... So you get the picture here. This is not the pattern. If you're hoping for snow, it's just not happening. All right, so let's get into the European flow here upper level pattern let's actually head towards our where we can go more out levels here further out there's our big old flow here that big old trough kicking that southern there's that southern stream system it has nowhere to go but eastward here because this trough really just blasts this cold air so far to the south and east it kicks that system right out and look at that big old ridging replaces it next week 
Yeah, that's craziness. So, yeah, we get a little bit of troughiness next Wednesday, Thursday, the 10th. But you know what? In all honesty, this is a very fast-moving pattern. You do start to see a ridge out west here. This is Friday, February 10th. So, might have something to look at here, but don't get your hopes up just yet. We've seen the pattern change on a dime just like that. All right, so let's take a look at the high-resolution European model here. It gives us a really good surface map here. You know, it's always good to go back and take a look at these features. So here it is across the south, European model bringing the low-pressure system up across the south. You have this wintry ice here at the shallow cold layer here across the east into Thursday. So there it is. So, you know, the heaviest ice there falling throughout Wednesday across Texas and then spreading up towards the northeast. But that system remains very, very suppressed. Look at this. Yeah, there's that trough Friday. It is suppressing the system so far to the south with this cold blast of air, this big 1042 millibar high to the west. This system has nowhere to go but out to sea. And look at that. Is that ocean effect snow or what out here? That's crazy. That's going to be so much cold air. That's a 1042 millibar high this far south. Going to get some bitter cold temperatures up here into the northeast for sure for your Saturday morning. But that quickly lifts out. And look what returns. A blasting southwest flow here on the east side of this. And look at this. Next week, it is all rain, my friend. Look at that. All the way up into Canada. What was that there? Let's go back. Yeah, when we get this far out, it's important not to chase these little pipe dreams out at 222 hours. Look at this. Even though it is a coastal, well, technically not a coastal storm. It's right along the coast. It's not really bringing much cold air down until it gets to this point. But even then, don't trust it this far out. It has a real tendency to do this. And look at this. Yeah, it, there is some sort of trough here, but you have to go to the 500 millibar flow to get a good idea. So I wanted to show you total quantitative precipitation amounts here across the southeast. Take a look at the European model here. This takes us through Friday. Let's actually head towards the southeast here. It'll give us a real good idea of how much precipitation is going to fall, how much ice could fall out of this. So, yeah, it looks like the most amount of precipitation you're going to get is, this is kind of like, you know, the winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories. It's mainly north of this line that you're going to see the, you know, the most ice right in this area, so to speak. So, if you're in like this area, you're probably going to see around a quarter to a half an inch of ice, in, you know, in some of the worst areas. So, this gives us a really good idea, you know, there is a a freezing rain component to these models, but they're highly, highly inaccurate. All right, so here's our temperatures in Fahrenheit as requested by many viewers, not the Celsius. So here it is Wednesday. Here's our lows. Yeah, it shows you the depth of the cold air here getting into Texas and Arkansas and western Tennessee here to support that ice storm. You see a lot of areas up here getting down to below zero here. So that is pretty interesting, but there's no really snow to go along with that. We get into Thursday. There's Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon. You do see that warm air push there. Let's back that up just a second. So we head into Thursday. There it is. 40s all the way up into Pennsylvania there. But look at that. As we head into the overnight lows, this is where we're going to start to see that big cold blast pivot here. Here's Friday morning. So you're going to start to see the effects of this Arctic blast here across the northeast. Your temperatures are going to fall throughout the day on Friday. You see this quick warm air surge here across the uh, Atlantic plain here. But look at that. Friday at noon here. Yeah, it is warming up across Texas all the way through the southeast. But we are blasting this cold temperature southward here across the east. And you can see Friday night into Saturday morning. This is where things just get downright brutal. Look at this. We got negative single digits there. Pretty much touching New York City there. And negative 20s. 10s and 20s up in this region. So it's going to be dangerously cold. And the wind chills. The winds are going to be howling out of the northwest 15 to 25 miles per hour. So it's going to feel more like 25 to 35 below in some of those areas. Saturday, it doesn't really warm up too much. 
But look how this starts to really erode. There's Sunday morning's lows. A layer of cold all the way down to Atlanta. Freezing mark. But watch how quickly that just erodes into Sunday. There's our lows Monday. And there is getting into Tuesday. We get this big old surge of warmth here in the east. Yeah, that's definitely not winter-like. And a, we just get reinforcement here that we're really not going to see much of winter time anytime soon here, at least in the short term. All right, my tropical viewers here in the Caribbean, Central America, the Gulf, and over into the Caribbean islands. Let's take a look. Yeah, this time of year, it's beautiful. There is nothing to be had. Oh, you people are in paradise this time of year. I really wish I could join you. All right, heading to the Western Pacific here. It is going to be close. We are going to be knocking on the door, you know, Typhoon season never truly ends out here, but it's going to get a lot busier. Now, here in the Philippines, things have been better. You can see we're going to continue with that better pattern, as I told you before, Sunday, February 5th. But we start to get into more of a rainy pattern here towards the 7th of February. You can see most areas uh, kind of benign of moisture, but the southern Philippines, here it is. You start to see some showers. Nothing too terribly heavy. Look at this up towards China. This is actually a frontal boundary, so that's nothing tropical in nature. You are essentially in wintertime, and we're well into wintertime into the beloved country here of Japan. So take a look at that. So here you have it. You got wintertime up here, and you're continuing with some tropical-type downpours here. It is cooler. Uh, but nevertheless, things are going to start to get a little bit more real here as we get towards Wednesday the 8th. This little feature, I am a little bit worried here, could become some sort of tropical entity. And it is kind of showing up a little bit of spit in the upper atmosphere here. Nevertheless, even if it doesn't become something very potent, it's going to continue to wash out and then eventually head towards the southwest. And we get another little wave over here. Take a look at this. This is towards Saturday. February 11th, and this kind of just spins out here into the open western Pacific and kind of washes out offshore. Now, look at this. This is the 16th of February. Please stay tuned if you're in the central Philippines here. You do have some interesting weather, and we could have some sort of a tropical feature that's kind of trending here, but this is 372 hours out. There is a big margin of, for error. I just wanted to let you know that things are going to start heating up out here into the Pacific Intertropical Convergence Zone. So if you're in uh, the Philippines westward here to Vietnam and even further westward, please stay tuned. Tropical season is literally right around the corner. And taking a look here, John from Islip, New York. This is New Rochelle, New York, over to Rye, New York. Take a look at this. Lots of clouds out there getting out there on the highway. Let's cruise along with him here as we're just going along a lot of those Cumulus, alto cumulus, alto stratus here. It is getting kind of cloudier as he goes out here in time. Take a look at this. Nice captures there. It is looking pretty interesting. The sun's trying to peek through the clouds there in his last photo. Really giving it justice here. You know, some overcast conditions here this past Friday, the 27th. Nice captures there, John. All right, so let me show you a quick view of the northeast. Things have moderated, if you can call this moderation, a little bit, but I caution you on this because things will bounce around a little bit. But here's Saturday. Here's your here's the worst of it right here. Is your is your pretty much like right around sunrise. This is like, yeah, this is um this is the negative. This is basically the zero degree line here. There there it is. So yeah, if you're north of this line, you're gonna be pretty much zero degrees. And you know if you're Anywhere along, say, this line right here. That's where you're going to be negative 10 degrees below zero. And if you're anywhere, like, in this line right here. This is crazy. This is negative 20 below zero. So... Please, if you have to head out Saturday, I know I have to head out Saturday. It's going to be pretty dangerous. So please, dress in layers. Make sure you, if you're driving the car like I am, have that winter survival kit with you. Because it's not going to be a happy time here. Now, uh, if this was snow with it, you know, some of you would be pretty happy. But this is just going to be plain old bone-chilling cold. 
Extended outlook for my hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley, Wednesday through Sunday here. Take a look at this. This is uh, interesting because we warm it up towards 38 by Thursday out of that warm front. But look at that. Arctic front's going to blast through Thursday night. Maybe a quick inch or less of snowfall. 11 degrees windy, blasting wind chills down as low as 20, 25 below only making it to 11 and look at this Saturday I've backed off a little bit on the cold but look at that negative six is still pretty harsh with wind chills below 20 below it's going to be terribly miserable 18 for your high into Sunday look at that a warm front blast in 43 degrees Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather Northeastern and Weather Eastern. Don't forget Facebook Media Mark, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern at Susquehanna Weather for my local page. And guess what? MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com is Twitter at Weather Eastern. Don't forget, question or comment down below. Smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell button, share the video, and thanks for joining me.